Right now, joining us here in the studio is retired Army Lieutenant General Russell Honore, who, of course, was involved in many search and rescue missions. Uh, this was uh, Colonel Honore, just a, a an extraordinary challenge. This mission for the Coast Guard. It Talk is, and uh, it's a good reason why they have brought in the Navy and even civilian assets uh, working at that depth. I had experience when I was at the Pentagon working for the Chairman of Joint Chiefs in the National Military Command Center, and as a respondent to White House requests for those type mission, I've dealt with three of these. The Russian submarine, as you remember, went off the North Coast. Uh, dealt with the Kennedy airplane that was T lost off the coast. T and TWA. Right. And Egyptian 300. Uh, so uh, the first thing, the earlier you know, the earlier you can start the search. Because normally the assets you need to back up the Coast Guard reside in the Navy and they're at Norfolk. So within hours, uh, what we learned after dealing with the submarine, you have to start moving the submersible that can get at that depth. And uh, it takes days, in some cases, to get all the assets. And uh, a lot of coordination and with the Coast Guard and the Joint Command Center they put together, we've improved all that. The first couple of times, Andrew, this was like, making it up as we go. But they have a good drill between the Coast Guard and the Pentagon now. When they ask for something, they get it. The thing is, how early can you get started? The earlier you get started in the search and rescue, the higher probability you can get to people. Should there have been some, some equipment, recovery vehicles, prepositioned with a high-risk submersible like this? That would be, uh, yeah, Monday morning quarterback in there. There should be some prepositions. And more redundancy, uh, like a ship above with a tether. I mean, but all that's second guessing. All we do now is pray that, with the luck and with the help of the uh, the good Lord, they're able to recover them. But I'm sure in the future there will be Coast Guard standards that will say, you know, you're not going because you you don't meet a standard, and that's what we need now. We can't have people just making up their own. Well, we're going to break the rules and go. And again, I, I, it's hard at this point to blame the victims or the survivors. But in retrospect, this was a volunteer mission. But it's a volunteer mission that has captured the nation and put a lot of pressure on the Coast Guard to do something that, uh, if they had a right to say to it, this probably wouldn't have gone. I know. It's, it's very difficult, and we don't know yet what the debris right. field really means. And so we're surmising that this could first certainly be a worst-case scenario. And a hard go out to the families and those who, as described by experts, I have not been at that depth, <laughs> but uh, of the situation that could be in that sub right now. Uh, Tom Costello, my colleague in Boston at the Coast Guard headquarters, wants to ask you a question. General Honoré. Well, I was just going to make the point. General Honoré, General Honoré makes the point. This is this has got the, the nation's attention uh, spellbound. Uh, but I would say this is an, very much an international story. We are surrounded. I am surrounded on all sides here by international media from every possible country, every language you can imagine. Uh, and this is dominating headlines and has uh, around the world for days now. Uh, I, I do think, if you don't mind, I think we should. It would be a good idea for us to remember uh, right now the names of the missing, uh, the, the people that we've been following, because these are real people. And to begin with is a Pakistani businessman. His name is Shazada Dawood. Uh, and his son, 19-year-old Suleiman Dawood, a university student studying in Scotland. Uh, Hamish Harding, uh, he's a very, very wealthy uh, British businessman. And he's the one who said, I recognize going down to the Mariana Trench that if something happens, I may not be coming back. Stockton Rush is the company's CEO, Ocean Gate CEO, and the, and the founder and the pilot. There is an unbelievable story with Mr. Rush. According to both the New York Times and the Washington Post, his wife is the descendant of two people who died on the Titanic. Uh, oh. In fact, they were among the wealthiest people to die on the Titanic. And now, according to the Times and the Wash Post, uh, his wife may end up losing her husband at the Titanic. Just an unbelievable series of events. And then finally, the Frenchman who is, the, who is a pilot, a, a sub-expert, is Paul-Henri Nogelet. Uh, he is known as one of the best trying to explore the Titanic with great 
uh, activity there. So all of them, with a great experience rather. Um, so we are talking about real lives, of course, with people who have families that love them dearly and they're still waiting for some word. Well, that's extraordinary because uh, that's probably, I mean, it's hardly, we, we can't really surmise, but it's, it might not be a, a coincidence that this is a descendant of two people who died on the Titanic and would be one of the people wanting to explore exactly what, where it was that his this wife, happened. His wife, is, his wife is the descendant. Right of two people who died on the Titanic. That's it's right, probably, just an you know, unbelievable coincidence. It's a family narrative that probably General Honoré is part of their You can imagine it's an emotional ride for that entire family, what's going on, and uh, they must be extraordinarily brave people. Uh, many have told of the risk that they were briefed on. Uh, their bravery is to do something that, in the exception to all the rules, is uh, remarkable and we need those people back. They're gifted people in their own right. And uh, hopefully the Coast Guard can lead an effort to bring them home safely. But uh, as been reported, uh, it's some dim hours right now. And General Honoré, you referred to some of the searches that you were involved in when you were on active duty. And we're talking about the airplane debris, uh, I guess it was off of JFK. Yeah. That was, I and think, an American sub. airliner. Uh, the, the sub, the Russian sub as well as uh, the Egyptian air. That's right. How complex is it to even find the debris of an airliner? Doing it underwater is like uh, leaving here and going to the Capitol with blinders on, with not seeing, because you have to depend on hearing and technology. You can't see at that depth. So you use a very advanced technology. Some of it can be affected by weather. You got to get the right stuff on the scene. It is a very complex operation. My hat's off to all the first responders out there because they're risking. That's not safe seas there, and it's cold uh, in the bottom. So it's, it's a complex operation. My hat's off to the responders.